It's exciting. The launch was great and it's good to see that this book is going to be on the shelves of people's offices and desks. So powerful because of the stories that are shared in that book, which are the real living experience of the people in direct provision. Anyone that picks up that book will have a sense of what a person who lives in direct provision go through on a day-to-day -day basis. It must be the catalyst to the change. Anyone that reads that book who's got the power needs to make it possible for that change. We need to change the experience of the people that have endured this direct provision for many years so that the people that are coming seeking protection here in this land are treated much better. It is an example of how not to treat people Sometimes it's mad because you think you know and you understand an issue and then you have to hear it again straight and directly from people. The first speaker tonight when like she's putting it back to you saying you know you have human rights and I have human rights and why are they so different and I think what I took from tonight is not only knowing and understanding the wrongness of the direct provision system and the protection applicant system but also the structural racism that exists underneath that and the fact that direct provision is just one part of that but actually before direct provision and after direct provision, race is playing such a violent role in how we treat people. And I just think that today, listening to the speakers, it just reminds me of why we have so much to do and why we need to continue to platform and create spaces for those experiences and those solutions to be heard and to fight harder. The Minister's Department have put the tender out. I mean, what does that look like? Is that going to be the answer? But then also looking at the housing needs, the welfare needs, the health needs, and the long-term health needs of people when they leave direct provision. Because at the end of the day, we can't only look to how we provide solutions for the future, but we need to look at how we actually treat people for what they've already experienced in their country, and that doesn't just disappear. So I think hopefully after today with the book we can see directly from people's experiences what they're saying and hopefully this can be another part of that journey out I suppose of how we have treated people so far. When a person comes of age in direct provision they've lost their childhood you've robbed the entire experience of being a child what it means to be a child because they certainly do not have a home direct provision centers aren't homes if it was a home you wouldn't have a manager I think it's a very important book that everybody should have a read and reflect on how Ireland has treated people who come to Ireland seeking protection over the last 20 years because we've seen quite a lot of denial from the Irish state over the years. None of the ministers ever acknowledged the violation of human rights and direct provision. It's only recently that they started speaking about ending direct provision and replacing it with a system that respects our human rights. So there was a system in place that denied people of their rights and we need an acknowledgement of that by way one of an apology but also a redress because if you remember the first high court decision where the direct provision was challenged in the courts actually found that the rules that operated in direct provision breached the right to private family in terms of the Irish constitution but also in terms of the EU charter on fundamental human rights and there was no apology extended to the people who were subject to that violation in fact we still have rules today that govern our lives as if we are children when we are grown up expected to report to somebody else when you're going to be absent. You have to go and notify the manager. I, my mother doesn't know where I am tonight, actually, but I'm supposed to let the manager in Nokleshin know. I think there isn't a realization from the Irish state that they've done harm, and that harm needs to be redressed. The idea is to get government to, one, start phasing out the system of direct provision and then we can start talking about redress because we need to get people who are stuck in the direct provision system integrated into Irish life because they speak about integration from day one but they still maintain restrictions on the right to work. For instance, there are asylum seekers in direct provision today who aren't allowed to work and they have to wake up every single day and watch others go to work and they see the positive changes that work brings to them are reminded every day that they aren't allowed to do the same. It's the first time I I've ever actually gotten to speak very personally with someone that's been in direct provision and I think with each interview there were so many different stories that came out of them that you just felt heavy coming out of all of them but also I think that they were really positive. What the system does is pushes everyone out into rural areas 
we are not connected and they do that obviously on purpose and I think for the first time it showed how important that is for people to be integrated with one another and to be able to become friends with some of them and sure there was also like a lot of positives to the interviews. They don't want to be speaking anymore about what is wrong with the system. Everyone knows what is wrong with the system. I think the most important thing is that the government listens to what each contributor has demanded which is an end to direct provision that people can just live a life. Everyone has the right to work, everyone has the right to healthcare, everyone has the right to education. Unfortunately, Ireland has a history of institutionalisation, but just a complete and utter dismantling of the system and no ifs or buts about that, really. I feel that we've just created a real impact and we have really spoken to the right agents of change. The people that were there are the right audience to reach out to and I feel great. I feel like this initiative or this book is going to impact so many people. It's something that Irish people do, they read. So I hope this will be something that they have on their dinner table or something like that. Personally, I hope the international protection system will be reviewed uh, because it really does feel like an interrogation and not like a protection system as it should be. And I hope uh, their provision will be will end as soon as possible because it's been talked about forever but i hope now people will after reading and uh, the experiences people have shared in this book i hope people will realize how it actually affects people i wish that this book can be just a stepping stone into educating i feel like this dark provision thing has been talked about but it's talked about in closed doors only a certain individuals will know about it but this book i will hope that it will reach into the irish community and make a real impact and make a real understanding that you really have to talk about it you have to educate your kids because they're the next generation that will lead this country so that we do not have the same system being talked about all oh, this has been going on for quite some time so i hope that it will land into the right hands and people will be more educated about their provision and the real issues that are really going on in there